The T2 Tile project is building an indefinitely scalable computational stack. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. Happy New Year. Top stories this week. Uh, working on the novel. It's just not working, thinking I can go back and forth and do a day or an afternoon on writing. So, like I said last week, I'm going to stop talking about it for a while, and I'm going to push it off until March after the deadlines that I'll talk about for that are coming up for the Artificial Life Conference. I'm going to dedicate a week uh, uh, to try to keep moving the ball. So, we'll see how that goes. But won't talk about it between now and then. Finally, finally, uh, uh, we've got Debian 10 Buster uh, uh, running on the T2 tiles. Uh, we'd had it mostly working last week, except we couldn't get the touchscreen to work, which had been a terrible problem previously, but uh, it seemed to be a different problem. And so that means we have leaped all the way from 4.4 kernel, Linux kernel 4.4 as of 2017 to Linux kernel 4.19 as of 2019 uh, um, and eventually you know I was tearing out what little hair I have left trying to figure out what had changed and so eventually I had them running side by side I mean so this uh, this gray window is the old key master running 4.4 uh, this dark black window is running 4.19 it's the red key master uh, uh, so you know where are they different where are they different and you know the problem I had getting the touchscreen going in in 4.4 was uh, a hard hardware problem, a hardware configuration problem that I had wrong, uh, uh, but that wasn't it. And so in particular, looking at the new, newer stuff, I was drilling down into these incredibly deeply buried things where you can get at information about what the communications hardware is doing. And in particular, the SPI interface, this ADS7846, that's the chip that uh, the touchscreens use, uh, the, the screens that we've got used to translate uh, actual touches on the uh, screen into numbers that get sent to the uh, to the Linux box, uh, um, and you know the bytes received were going up. You know I would touch the screen and and move it around, and there would be stuff received. I would check the number of interrupts that there was supposed to be an interrupt every time the pen finger whatever goes down to when it goes up, and the interrupts were going up. So it wasn't that, but I could couldn't for the life of me get any events to get delivered. And once I started figuring out how to get events to get delivered, they were all messed up. And, you know, in the end, right, so so there, you know, inter cat proc interrupts. I, I could search through the list of all the interrupts and so find ADS7846 and see, yes, indeed, touch the screen, interrupts go up. <sighs> Finally, the answer was that the SDL package, the simple direct library, uh, uh, something that, that, that the T MFM T2 code uses to display everything, the atoms and whatnot, and to handle input, mouse touches, um, touchscreen touches, and so forth, was busted as far as this particular touchscreen worked. And so the solution which I have now implemented is we build the SDL ourselves. We make a dummy package so that the overall package management system doesn't get upset by the fact that we're not installing the official one that's supposed to be there. And in particular, all the other packages, like having to do with fonts uh, and so forth, we don't have to actually build them. <sighs> the long and short of it is, uh, uh, with, you know, the month of November taken up trying to write a novel, the best effort. The month of December taken up trying to upgrade Linux. Uh, and, and finally, finally, here we are in January in a new decade, and we have just gotten this actually working. So we are sort of back where we were two months ago uh, uh, as far as overall uh, functionality of the T2 tiles and, and still are facing getting intertile events working. But there was one more issue. I uh, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, uh, so the Red Keymaster was going to be the replacement for the White Keymaster that I've been using all along back in the 4.4 era to actually have the private signing key on it so that uh, new versions of the software could be released that would be accepted by the other tiles that have the public key for the common data manager compiled into them so that uh, we could spread stuff out. And the Red Keymaster was going to be the new version of it. It was red because I had printed up a nice red case using this PETG stuff uh, that I really like as a replacement filament for the PLA that I had done everything with for uh, most of the project. And, you know, so here, you know, every time, if you want to, when you need to reflash the whole disc on a T2 tile, you need to take the cover off so that you can get to the slot where the mini SD card, micro SD card goes in. So this thing I was taking on and off so much that I just put rubber bands on it to hold it in. I hadn't even screwed it down. Uh, uh, over the last uh, several days when I finally got uh, Debian 10 all working because I started building SDL myself. Uh, um, I wasn't actually using this guy because I was out and I just building it on another tile because, you know, it doesn't really matter until a, a signing key actually gets put on them. And so the actual last guy to get flashed with the new software was the Red Keymaster. Uh, I screwed him into, I, I pep plugged him into the power zone that I've been building and rebuilding and rebuilding as I go through all this and the touchscreen didn't work on the red keymaster the touchscreen worked on the other 15 tiles in the power zone not on the red keymaster I thought it well you know maybe it's this the screen had gone bad uh, uh, so I replaced it with another one and that didn't work either so then I felt bad and then I thought well maybe it's because I w had failed to put insulation between the back of the display which is what you're looking at here and the top of the the beagle bone green and maybe they were shorting out somehow so i took off the screen cover the you know the protection film and i put it on the back to cover up to insulate the thing it didn't help so i swapped it out entirely for a whole different display i got that proper capped on tape and set that up so that you know yeah it's it's insulated and you so i mean you can see there the the exposed pins on the back of the beagle bone green are right there uh, um and you know so maybe that was it. No, it wasn't. Uh, uh, and I put the whole thing back together again. And as I was putting it back together again, it started to seem like if I actually screwed the screws down snug, not even super tight, you already have to kind of leave the southwest case screw a little bit loose or else the power switch kind of gets jammed down because the tolerances are a little tight. But I knew about that, and that's okay. This is it more in the northwest corner, although it's seemed to be kind of in any of them and what I found was if I screwed it down not even that tight that uh, whoops yeah that so the interrupts were starting to go crazy so I wasn't doing anything I was just looking at this every two seconds the thing was updating and the number of interrupts were going crazy like it was seeing a permanent hit so it was going I got something got something got something and in fact it was never seeing up it was never seeing the release and so it wasn't actually doing anything finally I backed off the screw a little bit at 17,200 <laughs> interrupts and and then the interrupt stopped. So as far as I can tell, and once I backed off and got it loose enough, then the uh, touchscreen started working. I could bring up the uh, command menu and, and cancel it and do things and so forth. So as far as I can tell, the mystery of the Red Keymaster is the Red Keymaster case. I switched it out for a PLA, one of the black cases that I've just had sitting around, and it's fine. I can screw the screws down to the same amount of tension that I expected to, uh, and everything works fine. So at the moment, the red keymaster is black. <laughs>
<laughs> the only thing that's red about it is I have two red, tiny little red buttons on the whole thing, and, and that's it. So uh, that's a bit distressing. I don't know if there's something, I mean, if PETG prints slightly thicker or shrink or something, I don't know. Uh, but the red Keymaster case seems to be systematically associated with the touchscreen not working, which is a little bit scary, just that the mechanics are that tight. But I've not seen this with any of the other ones that I've melt, that I've that I've dealt with, you know, dozens uh, anyway. Uh, um, so I don't know. So we'll see. Uh, uh, and so here's the red key master. <laughs> and, you know, it looks like it's got some red at the bottom. Well, that's just the speed frame for uh, putting the nuts in and out. That's not actually the thing. Uh, uh, but then, again, with the new case on it, uh, it all starts working fine. Uh, uh, and and um, I, this was a fun one. I, the camera actually caught it halfway between the display of dismissing the menu and going back to the base one. So, yeah, and then the interrupts act reasonably. Uh, when you touch, they go up. When you don't, they don't. So that's it. What I wanted to try to do here is let's do a live demo, okay? Uh, uh, so I've got the whole power zone here. Uh, uh, let's power it up and see if we really can get 16 out of 16 uh, uh, tiles to come up. It still takes an awful long time for them to come up. It takes about 80 seconds for them to come up, uh, um, which is sad. Um, I'll be able to speed it up a little bit, but the main problem seems to be, even though it, the shutdown all seems to go correctly, it seems like every time it comes up, it wants to file system check the disk, and it burns up like 25 seconds doing that, that it's really not supposed to need if it's shut down cleanly. So I don't understand that. Uh, and then there's a bunch of other little stuff that's still happening because I use the Internet of Things distribution that has so much stuff stuffed into it, so that it might be possible to speed up the boot uh, a little bit going forward in the make things better uh, uh, principle than we've gotten here so far. But what I'm really concerned about is, everybody, look at that. Look at that. Ah! <laughs> everybody came up. That makes me so happy. <laughs> after all this mysterious system D failures. Uh, uh, now, it takes a, a very long different time for all of the uh, MFM to actually get started running. Uh, and officially, I want to count the boot time up until uh, MFM is doing events. But the fact that these things take so long is mostly because they're actually getting wedged in the fact that the inner tile stuff is not working yet. So these these things have started to see things, see stuff coming from the neighbors, which has caused them to get lock, lock, locked up, which is causing them to do timeouts and so forth. So hopefully these guys will all come. Yeah, so they're starting to, so that's, there, there we go. Everybody is up. They're all pretty well wedged because we don't have an our tile that's <laughs> working properly yet. But uh, uh, the touch screen is working. We can do grid wide events like get rid of the statistics screen. Look at that. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, get it back. Uh, um, see now, did we not see some kind of the grid? The grid prefix sometimes doesn't quite work the way I expect it to. So I think that's, that, that sent a command around to everybody to turn it off. Uh, uh, so, well, let's try somebody else. Uh, um, grid, what the heck, shut down. And again, some of these guys are in the process of timing out from being wedged about uh, um, inner tile stuff being messed up. So hopefully when those guys finish timing out, they will uh, go ahead and process the, the grid timeout message. Maybe we shouldn't stay because we have other stuff to talk about. But, oh, there they go. Okay. <laughs> now I feel like we've actually got a reasonable base to put 
our work on intertile events on top of. Uh, um, so, all right. Uh, um, finally, just at the end here, it's now seven weeks to March 1 as far as T Tuesday updates are concerned, which is the deadline for submitting the scientific paper. But that's not the only deadline of this conference that I want to submit to. Uh, uh, the art, robotics, displays, and visualizations, which is where the T2 tile grid is going to get submitted as an art, robotics, display, and visualization. That's due May 15th. That's later, so that's okay. But there's also workshops, tutorials, and special sessions. And I think, you know, really it's time to do an Ulam Splat introductory tutorial. So I think I'm going to try to write a tutorial proposal, and that's due January 17th? I thought it was due February 17th. Oh my goodness, I'm not, has that changed? I'm not sure if that's changed. I thought it was February. Yeah, um, so, well, so that's really quick. Yeah, um, and we'll see. Uh, um, it, the, the tutorials are only an hour and a half long, which is incredibly fast. But we'll generate a, uh, some lecture out of it, and we'll get video. And there'll be tutorial exercises and stuff that will be hopefully of value going forward even after the tutorial, regardless of whether anybody <laughs> actually shows up. I mean, hopefully somebody will show up. And we'll even get as far as maybe people be able to do some simple stuff that will run on the grid by the end of the week of the conference. We'll see. All right, so that's the plan for the next, well, real soon now, uh, and we'll just keep checking off as much as we can get to and then over the next seven weeks. Happy New Year. Hopefully we're going to start seeing a lot of progress on a lot of fronts in the next weeks and months. 2020 is the year of the T2 tile. Let's make it so. Hope to see you next week.